you want to kick us off, Eli? Yeah, sure. Let me pull up the issue. Do you want to share your screen? Yeah, it's just finding the issue right now. Oh, got it. So here are some of the points about what made contributing hard. Um, working with somebody that is not on the team the other day. Also, I was able to see like firsthand some of these small nuances that people that aren't working in the code base every day might hit when trying to contribute. Um, a specific example is like the K build. If you have K build brew installed and you want to contribute, running the test will use your brew installed K build and not the one that you've built locally. Um, so just little things like that, that could cause frustration and confusion when initially trying to contribute that could potentially be made easier. So I guess we wanted to just sort of go over some of these points, discuss if there's anything that we can do to ease the frustration and pain around them. Uh, and come out with a list of potential improvements. I think I think that you mentioned uh, not 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 running the locally built version because I remember adding uh, uh, I remember adding a piece of code that was uh, meant to do that. It will run your uh, build binary build in your current directory or 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 in the yeah actually in the current directory I think. Yeah, I think that might be part of the mini cube one and not the test all, but I'm not positive or it's not even part of this code base. I found it. It's in uh, test E to E. Hmm. And test all also sets that thing. Um, I think we were running go test from the test directory with a dash run. So it wasn't being exported because we just wanted to run a single test. We, we didn't want to do all the relocation and everything uh, and wait for all those to finish just to see the result of the changes we were making. Interesting. OK. Cool. Yeah, actually, as part of, as part of that issue, we have, uh, there was a PR to augment the development documentation. Mm. So now there is a docs slash devmd that carries some of the stuff. <clears throat> um. okay. But anyway. So in, in certain cases, we're running the brew, the brew installed, not the built binary. Uh, depending on how you are running your test. If you use mm -hmm. go run or go test, then yeah, unless you have like your path set up properly. If you're mm -hmm. using the hack test scripts, it seems like it'll export it. Cool. What else has come up? Um, Again, the debugging, like the initial instinct was once a test failed to sort of jump into the debugger and see like why it was failing or what different values were at a certain point. Um, because we are shelling out to another process, the debugger is unable to like set breakpoints and everything within the built binary. So that was a pain. Is that there. Delve or Goland or both? Because I thought with Goland you could uh, attach to a running process and. I don't know that you can follow it to the 
binary it shows out to because it's probably not compiled with debug headers and everything. Okay. Um, Delve you can use, but you can't like run the tests with it. You have to do the setup manually and then run the command that you want to test with the Delve. Mm. What, what other um, stuff? I, th I think in that, like, if we sort of enumerate some things and then have a sense of what, what are the bits that, like, Dimitri is pointing out, some of this is mitigated. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but what, what are possibly like some high value things if we can come out with like a couple of things to make improvements? But it, they're mm -hmm. the high value ones that would be most useful. Yeah, I think. You had made some suggestions around this one about insertion fails. Assertion fails are hard to read. Uh, I believe there's some specific examples or no, a specific example of an alternative. Uh, I think there's one in the middle where he's showing a, uh, it feel, let's see, this is due to the reason that no stack is generated during spawning K-build process. Initially, assertions are hard to read. And then there's a big code block. Yeah. I think this is a suggestion of using TJ I assert. see. I see. OK. Right, 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 right. So uh, what, what does it look like when the assertion fails? What kind of feedback do we it, get? It depends on what the test was, like how it was set up and what the assert.fail or the testing.fatalf argument was. Like, I don't think there's a standard across different things. It's just whatever string and output, whoever wrote the test felt was necessary. I see. Okay. So this is one of those, like, you have to go into the individual case by case. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I think there are, like, sort of conventions in something like YTT where it uses, like, the angle brackets around the expected and uh, actual to sort of display the whether there's spacing or something that is not visually obvious mm -hmm. now we have failure. diffs we're using we're using uh uh mm -hmm. our fork our fork of a of a diff package so yeah those are even easier to see what's going on mm -hmm. okay um but even some of the wording in that i think that, and i think this is definitely a case-by-case -case basis but like the wording of expected something to match something uh, may give the impression that what follows expected is what is expected, um, especially when the to match is sort of thrown in in like this big block of YAML and stuff. It may be a little easy to miss. Um, and are you, are you talking about K-Build or YTT when you're thinking about that? This one's YTT. Okay. Gotcha. Or K-Build, I think, is where we actually hit that as well. Hmm. Um, asserting on the lock files. Yeah. Gotcha. But I, again, I think that is a very case by case one. So it may not be confusing to everyone. Cool. What what else do we got? Uh, hey, Manuel. Hello, everybody. Uh, top topic right now, we're going over uh, Folks contributing to K-Build, there's some speed bumps along the way. So we're looking at them and trying to prioritize and figure out where we're going to improve. 
right now we're talking about where the pains are. Mm, I think the other one. Or two, I guess, are like there's that many unit tests. Um, I think that was sort of addressed in the response. And I think actually both of these were addressed. So the, the unit test, that was, mo the complaint was mostly about just like the speed, like being able to run the suite uh, and have it not take a long time. Is that what that was about? Um, Is it that it, was it really about uh, I believe in unit tests and you don't have enough unit tests or was it uh, this is taking a long time and I want it to be faster? I think here, I, th I don't think that it was related to too much time. I think that was a separate issue, but I think that was addressed by suggesting using like running your specific test while developing and then oh, uh -huh. running the full suite. Um, yeah, I agree with their approach, but some places just missing more unit or specific EDE tests. For example, check that image set tags have been really created on the registry. Hmm. I see. Okay, so, so there's, there, there's, a, there's a, a question about coverage. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Okay. Um. Or yeah, here's another example. Like if someone forgets an error check in the code, kbuild won't error, which is something like your test won't necessarily catch. Oh, yeah. That would, okay. It, it, wait, was there an example of that where we were dropping an error? I, I don't know that. We have a specific example, but I'm sure it could happen. Like somebody just forgets an if error. Right. Okay. Um, coverage of tests. Cool. Any other targets there? Dimitri, do you remember anything out of that conversation that you thought was meaty? No, I think some of that was addressed with a doc. I mean, the bullet points at the top are, you know, covering there. I, I think, you know, some of the stuff is also You know, I guess everybody has various uh, kind of preferences. And so I guess a kind of a general question of like, what should be a preferred way to run your test in terms of like, should you be using a, a local registry or a registry that you like Docker Hub or whatnot, right? And so I guess uh, depending on those preferences, right? Some people will benefit from the default setup. Some people will have to like try to find out more about like how do you actually run a registry locally? And like, for example, running a registry locally is a pain in the butt, especially if you are, you know, like I typically run my Docker in Minikube. And so there's all kinds of crazy networking going on, right? But I think in this case, uh, um, he was also a Windows user. So I'm not even sure how you even set that up. So yeah, I guess some of that stuff was addressed maybe in documentation uh, that was PR'd. Um, but yeah, I guess there's a maybe general topic of prerequisites. Mm. 
Do you mean in terms of like what they are? How did like are we documenting them? Like all that stuff or? Um, I guess so. I mean, I guess I guess table stakes are we at least call them out. This is, you need to do something for this, like basic instructions for what the needs are to run the test suite. Right. Um, do we have that right now, Eli? Do we name what all the prerequisites are? Mm -hmm. Well, these ones. So this was PR then. I'm not sure about like, you know, other repositories, mm. if they stated that clearly. Um, mm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Were there, were there other pain points, or do, do you think we've got a good good enough list? Is there anything we're missing that's important? Not off the top of my head, I'm curious if anyone here has had any issues in the past. I think the main thing for me was getting started, just setting up the right environment variables. I'd run into uh, an error message that said expected image to be set and wasn't. Um, but I suspect if... Uh, do we show that in the instructions here to like point to where your image should be? No. Okay. Well, so these instructions we're doing against Minikube registry versus like, you know, you know, I, I personally run against like a Docker hub, right? So you would need to specify a environment variable um, for your Docker hub username, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you all tried to like, well, which, you know, way of you all are running. <clears throat> Do Docker Hub, typically. And, and like in the moment, it's, you know, we're playing a story. We're just trying to get it going. So we didn't necessarily like capture all the instructions. It's like, oh, this is broke because I need OIC dug into the code. We need, right, a proper... Um, uh, URL for an image. Oh, okay. Or, or a repo and just put that in. Uh, but, but worked backwards from that. So it's one of those things where I can understand if somebody doesn't have a pair with them, et cetera, that it's not the greatest experience to start with an error message and work my way back in order to get the tests going. That if I had context-free instructions, like, okay, assuming you're using Docker Hub, uh, you've got an account, you can uh, and you've got a repo to spare for those who are using uh, a free version. Um, maybe you want to create a free version in order to do this. Um, then uh, here, here, set the environment variable, and here you go. Like, just sort of, if I followed it step by step, I would at least get a running test. Well, actually, funny enough, as part of the PR, that environment variable was dropped. Huh. So since since the the PR was adding uh, describing how to run it against the local registry instead of running it against your uh, you know against your Docker Hub. So you're just going to add a section for. Running EDE against Docker Hub. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's our recommendation? Well, this was kind of alluding to, you know, in previous minutes, is that to me it's very, you know, it depends on, you know, kind of a person's familiarity, person's environment. Like some people may not have Docker Hub, but some people. You know, like I barely use Docker Hub, but it's very easy to configure it to run it for me in this scenario. 
So it's kind of like uh, it, it. In my head, it depends on the person's uh, preference of how to set that up. Like I, I, mm-hmm. I would not like I, I. I went through the mini cube local setup once to figure out for CI. Yeah, I don't even remember actually going through it entirety because it was too painful to do it. So I just, you know, made sure that the CI itself, you know, is able to do it, and then I never looked at it again since uh, you know it's just too painful for me to run it but it sounds like uh, uh, it sounds like it was helpful for this case hmm. I mean if majority of you all are using docker hub then I would say that's probably the preferred way right I mean, especially since CI is using Minikube, I'd like to have uh, another kind of registry. Uh, all, all, all the better to, to get a little bit of diversity in, in when we're testing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, yeah, I guess I don't know if there is a difference between the Docker registry image versus the Docker registry SaaS offering. Probably there is. Um, but you know the registry APIs are fairly standardized. I mean, we know that there's some differences, but overall, like since the beginning of KBuild, I've not run into a a single difference that that affected really much. Actually, maybe one. Yeah. All right, so I'm I'm hearing the proposal that like, hey, can we just augment these to say, hey, if you want to do it locally, here's how to do it with Minikube. Uh, in our experience, it's been uh, fewer steps and less brittle to do it with Docker Hub. And here's how to do it with Docker Hub. So we we could we could recommend Docker Hub for. Uh, ease of use, and then if for a reason you want to use Minikube, we'll at least give you this, like keep that. Mm -hmm. Is that sounding? I think that makes sense. Okay. Um, so, and it sounds like the assertion failures are hard to read thing is like, like you said, it's a case by case basis. So maybe this is one of those things where because of that, it means we need to take a sweep and go find the assertions that are confusing, like lack context, et cetera. I don't think there's anything we can do here in this forum to like identify, you know, we have, it sounds like we have to go through individual cases and figure out what those general challenges are. I, I would recommend just, you know, if there is something, you know, if you run into it and it's something unclear, make an improvement and kind of uh, keep rolling. Well, that makes sense. We'd hope that we do that ongoing. I guess the question is whether or not we want to proactively go seek out because we've gotten feedback that there is some tests that have confusing messages in the assertions. If we want to proactively go uh, look for those and then make them make those improve them. Yeah, one thing I think of is like Eli gave an example of. Uh, the wording like expected something to match what got. Uh, we could search for that phrase. Like that would reduce our search if we did want to go out and like search and fix those those tests. So if we know exactly what it is that we need to look for and that we want to fix. I think it would make it a lot easier to do that change.
I guess my personal take on it is that this specific improvement may be able to be fixed over time by just changing test assertions that you run into. Whereas maybe some of the other suggestions are, are more pressing as we get more contributors. Curious how others feel. Yeah, I would agree. Um, as a suggestion for the debuggability one, mm. is there a reason that we're shelling out instead of just doing a dot run? That's the kind of decision I made earlier on because I wanted to test the product surface uh, versus testing some you know, internal API that may or may not actually cover the the end to endiness, if you will. Um, is there value in splitting that though, where like not every test is an end to end test, and you have a set that sort of tests the end to end part, but if you're like running the same command with different flags or different options, like making those a dot run. I, you know, this, this to me becomes quite, you know, subjective in the, in the value. Um, personally, I like it the way it is, but if that's not something that, you know, is shared by you all, then, you know, maybe we should reconsider. Um, I, I think there is, you know, there's certain, I guess, benefits to that decouplement. And it's also a lot more kind of a, at least in my mind, more real world kind of a, it's a more real world example, right? Nobody is running the, the test with that run with a bunch of stuff, right? They're, they're calling out the CLI with a particular set of flags and whatnot, right? And that's the API. <clears throat> And like in, in your mind, it's different for say like YTT because folks do want to embed a templating engine. And so they do want to program out. I mean, we have multiple examples now of where that's exactly what folks have done. They've reached in for uh, so in, API. In, y, in YTT, most of the tests are actually, you know, component level tests. They're not the CLI level tests. Right, so you actually, if you look at YTT, there is a E to E test that's actually a bash script that compares, you know, it actually calls YTT blah 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 and compares with the expected output. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So that's the kind of a level we're talking about. Versus, there is a lot, you know, there's a lot of tests in YTT that that assemble a few components, right, and then verify certain behavior. Um, Yeah, I guess it, it, it's less about preference and I guess more about um, what, what's possible. I think that's what's on the table 
as I understand it, that well, if if the tests are invoked, I, I hear the I hear the part that you're talking about. It's like, well, what is the true API? What is the thing that's actually in practice being used? And for KBuild, it's it's the binary. And so I don't want to I don't want to fast forward past that point. I I think that's valuable and important because if your tests test against something other than the true API, then it's a it's a little weird. Uh, and and you don't have like you're not actually testing exactly what's being used. Um, but I'm hearing this like pragmatic desire to be able to downshift into debugging doesn't necessarily mean that we have to have that we can't shell out, but we would need to find a way to be able to do that, like bring back that capacity in an easy way. Uh, or write the tests in a way that they they do run in process, that KBuild runs in process with the test. Yeah, I don't know what the answer is here. You know, the the you know, I don't know what the, the debugging technology is where it's at nowadays. I, I rarely use the kind of a ID enhanced debugging myself, so I'm not familiar with what's possible, what's not possible. I don't know, you know, maybe somebody else on the call can talk more about that um, if they're a heavy user. Um, yeah, I think I think underneath this is is in terms of kind of coming back to our our user, if you will, as the um, contributor, this person we're talking about, their experience, whether or not we see debugging as an important capability there, right? I think that's the heart of it. So if we if we decide that it is, then we want to find a way to make that possible, or or we say, well, uh, we can make the test experience sufficiently, what we think would be sufficiently good uh that you know if you reach in for a debugger may, maybe there's an easier way and we can help nudge you in that direction but i do think in general when i when i see products that have a test suite that stand back that, that try and test at the highest level uh that there's often points where because implementation details are allowed to float, they can be really handy to just, okay, in this particular case, run this high level test and set my breakpoint at the at the part that uh, I really care about. And I can pretty quickly get that feedback about, okay, this is the piece that broke that ultimately bubbles up to this more general assertion failing. I mean, you know, it's it's probably possible to the way that the E two E tests are designed is there is a K build object that represents the K build invocation, and so you could probably shim it in, but I would argue that I would still want to have ability, and probably what the CI should do is run the you know run the commands you know, by shelling out, but you could imagine having an option to say, okay, well, the test can, you know, if there is a debugger flag or whatever, then it could try to call the commands explicitly or something. So what what other people, if we chunk back up to that question about the contributor experience, what do folks think about in terms of debugging 
is that is that a capability that we want to invest in making sure is possible? It's something that I've run into. Um, and I ended up using Delve, which wasn't immediately uh, clear how to use and wasn't straightforward with the way that the tests were set up. So I did feel that pain a bit, but I feel like I have a workaround now that works for me, but it took me a while to get there. So I think that there could be some room for improvement there. What is that workaround? So what I've been doing is um, I run the tests using um, the, the test suite and I'll copy the output of the commands that Kbuild runs. Um, like I'll copy one of the commands and I'll run that command through Delve, setting a breakpoint where I need and that that does work, but I can't run it like directly from the test suite. Mm. So you grab the invocation, you delve it, and so you're in a debugger. Yeah. One thing to call out though is that's very dependent on the fact that our setup is log lived for all of these tests. Like yeah. K build an image package, create sort of setup images or something like that, and then run the command under test. And we never actually delete those images. But if there's a test suite that does have cleanup of some of the setup steps, then that you'd have to somehow kill it at the right moment or put a breakpoint in the test just so you could then run delve in some other window or something like that. So it's, it's sort of cheating with the assumption that setup is never cleaned up in the test. Mm -hmm. Which is a safe assumption to make because Docker Hub doesn't have a delete endpoint. No. Oh. Um, All right, we're coming up on 9, 9.45. So, I've, I've written down a couple of things. So uh, in terms of next steps, so one is including instructions on how to test against Docker Hub. Mm -hmm. um, I heard something along the lines of make certain pattern-based improvements to test assertions. So Carrie gave us an example of, hey, if you look for a particular kind of assertion, probably get real, you can get Good bang for your buck and then like dimitri was saying as we go along uh if you didn't feel empowered to improve the test or look for assertions that weren't necessarily intuitive you now do <laughs> like that should be part of what we're improving um i heard some fuzzy talk around uh, it sounds like it that debugging can be useful uh that there might be ways of either uh, making Carrie's workaround a little bit easier. If there's like a way of, of saying, oh, you want to debug this? Here, here's the command line. Like we could spit out like what, uh, make it easier to, to get to that point and just have instructions around that. Or explore, do explore to say, well, what would it look like to be able to optionally run the command directly like Dimitri was saying, but in the same suite, it's a flag where it's like, it'll do uh, an exec command in CI, but if you wanna downshift into debugging it locally, you can set that flag. And now when you run it in your ID or whatever, your debugger, it's in process. Did I miss? Any any other suggestions for improvements? Come up. I don't think so. Cool. Okay. All right. 
All, All right. right. Well, yeah. Uh, well, it's it's good to see you, Manuel. <laughs> you're you're getting a flavor of our uh, um, tech forum style approach that we're trying out here for these sessions to try and make them pragmatic and useful for everybody. I actually have a couple of questions for Kebul because uh, I there was a tool. Uh, from Pivotal called KPAC before. And is KPAC related to Kbuild? Um, one of the applications I have, just to give you uh, an idea, this is something I'm looking into is uh, function as a service and uh, packaging functions. Uh, so I'm looking at the, um, as a DevOps, right? I'm looking at the developer's experience and I, I have to, uh, I'm, I'm looking into this project, um, provide an environment so that the developers can be, uh, uh, have a very high productivity. And um, so what I would want to do is package their functions into, uh, you know, ultimately they will work on the functions, but I want to do all the pipeline of uh, automations, essentially building the image uh, with Kbuild with or a similar tool. And is this, is this a type of, uh, 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 type of use case you're looking at? I'm, I'm still a bit confused. I understand that there are build packs that Kbuild work with build packs. So it means you can build a Docker file and uh, on the fly and by looking at the code. What, what can you tell me about uh, uh, if you are looking you know, into, you know, because for me, I'm not looking specifically at the tools, right? I'm looking more about my work, right, ultimately. Uh, I'm trying to find the right tool for my work. Um, I understand today we talked about testing and so on, but um, which is not so relevant to me. What is relevant to me is that I have to find some uh, tool set to deploy in Kubernetes uh, function as a service and to do that uh, as fast as possible. And uh, I'm looking at Kbuild and wondering if that could be uh, the, one of the tools that I could use to do that. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with build packs, right? It's a, you know, build packs have a long history coming from Heroku world, right? Um, yes. and Cloud Foundry. And so it seems like a lot of organizations nowadays have rallied around CNCF, you know, build packs, um, as a way to convert their source code into a Docker image, right? So no Docker file involved. Yeah. Um, and the, the way that build packs operate is th there is no support, if you will, for Docker files. Um, yes. KPAC is a system that effectively provides you a few CRDs in your Kubernetes cluster uh, to convert your source code with build packs into those Docker images, right? So it's effectively, you know, you could imagine build packs is a thing that can convert, but you have to kind of wrap it into something that orchestrates it, right? When you say, oh, some new Git code came into Git repository, right? You want to be able to, uh, you know, you want to be able to build it and then publish it as an image, right? Yes. Now, separately from that, kbuild, is a tiny tool, part of the Carvel tool suite, to make it easy for users who are dealing with Kubernetes YAML to build and resolve the image references. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can kind of see KBuild as more of a thing that maybe calls out to other tools to build things. So you could imagine, like, for example, KBuild calling out to KPAC to build something. Currently, it only calls out to two things. It calls out to Docker daemon, where it can just does Docker build so that Docker files are supported. And then it also supports pack CLI, which is effectively like the CLI version of KPAC, uh, which also runs locally. Uh, and so that, that uses, you know, that uses the same build packs to convert your, you know, local source code into something, right? And so, the this kbuild and kpack don't have a direct relationship but one could imagine kbuild using kpack if you are trying to kind of a build uh kind of a diy 
function as a service system, right? You could imagine using bill packs to convert your source code, the function, right, into something that runs, right? In fact, I think there's probably a few people in the community who has been kind of looking into that and probably shipping products around that. Um, I know that within the K-native uh, community, there is a, a functions, uh, I guess, group, working group. Mm -hmm. um, so you may want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, I would say, I guess in general, k -Bill won't probably be something that will, you, you'll probably would want to make a system that maybe I mean, I don't know, it depends. I could imagine I could imagine various ways how one can use and not use cape build in this kind of thing, right? Okay. So it, it kind of really depends where you're drawing the abstractions, what kind of APIs you're you're trying to offer, what's running behind those APIs as an implementation detail. Do you Ooh, know yeah. uh yeah, I I I'll investigate some more. Do you know um any offering from, uh, are you part of Tenzu, by the way, or are you not? Or? Uh, okay. Yes, we are. We are part of VMware uh, Modern Applications Business Unit, which is working on yeah. Tenzu. Yeah, okay. Um, do you know if uh, VMware is, I mean, I'm sure VMware is kind of investigating function as a service and has been for a while, but is there like an offering or right now that is coming down that you have, are hearing about? Oh, not yet. Like Tenzu function as a service. I don't know. Um, I, to be honest, you know, there, there's, there's various teams in, in the organization. There's definitely folks that are looking at stuff like that. I'm not sure if there's any kind of, uh, you know, uh, products or not, but we do have a few folks that uh, are the founders and maintainers of Knative working for VMware. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like I said, the Knative community has a functions working group uh, that may give you some more direction yeah, there. I'm, I'm, already, uh, I'm already on the working group. Okay. Um, okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Cool. Great, great questions. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for this week. Um, yes. I'll I'll take um, I'll take those items that we came up for for improvements, and I'll at least uh, get get them into our our backlog to be I uh, pre IPM'd, and we'll look at those and get get those into the backlog, make the improvements. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank you, Manuel. Thanks. All right. Take a See break, and then we'll, we'll we'll come back for for stand up. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks, Dimitri. Cheers. Bye -bye. Good to see you. Yeah.